This man literally owned the popular franchise for high life for decades. E.T. Mensah, the king of high life, playing his heart out in the late 1950s. High life has come a long way. It's gone through changes. It originally started as OCP. Our fisher folks will sing and dance at the beach and in fact it's a test of their energy and their power they fight among themselves and if you can sing and say OCB, OCB, Dende, OCB, then you hit the chest of the opponent and if he fell down then you are the winner and that developed into Adaha music which they use one drum to strike the rhythm There's a lot going on, but I like uh, we should not forget about what happened in the past. Konkoba, then the Dagomba, and then the guitar bands also came in. This actually started from when the people are drinking a pot of palm wine under the palm tree. They'll be strumming their guitars and singing palm wine songs. And this developed into the guitar band music and gave birth to people like Kaikuiku, uh, Oina, Kwa uh, Mensa, and many others. High Life was introduced to the white people who were here as colonial masters. They incorporated that into their nightclubs and things. And then they tried to add wind instruments. And created the first big orchestra here, the Accra Orchestra. There was also the police band who also played wind instrument in the High Life band. In fact, the police band is known to be the first Ghanaian group to record High Life. I don't know if you remember that song. Everybody likes Saturday night. Everybody, 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 everybody likes Saturday night. This was recorded on vinyl. Then came the Railway Silver Band, who also incorporated Western music into the Ghanaian High Life, and it built up. The Tempo's band also came on the scene. Uh, then we have the uh, Red Sports Band, the Rhythmers, the Broadway Band, the Globe Masters, the Stargazers, and it can go on and on and on and on. And this all happened in the late 60s and 70s.